Hey guys, thanks for clicking in. I wanted to go over what I found out by using uh, what's called the rope trainer all this week on the lessons that I had. We conducted a simple experiment, a control group and then a group that uses this. Uh, the control group, how we did it, is we had the control group step up on the mound and we had them warm up and then throw into the net and we measured their velocity and we also filmed them out. Then the next stage, what we did is we took the rope and I had them throw anywhere between 15 to 20 pitches. Now you don't let this go. What you're doing with the rope is I'm out here in front, I'm acting like I'm pinching and just popping it through. Just popping it through. Have them doing 20 of them to warm up with it. Then the next thing that I did after they were warm is I did about another 10 to 15. And I added a, a bucket lid. And I held a bucket lid and I stood out in front of them in this position here. And I had them reach out and try to hit the end of the rope on the end of the bucket lid. If they were successful at hitting the end of the rope on the bucket lid, I would move out and keep moving out until they struggled. And then when we struggled, I would tell them to do a couple things. Hey, get your body moving. Reach out in front of you. Push with your back leg. So they did everything to develop power. And then I found that other spot that they couldn't hit. And that's where I knew they were maxed out. At that point, I went over to my camera and I filmed them on the next pitch to compare what it was with the control group. And then we measured the velocity for about six more pitches and compared that to the control group. What I found is that about 75% of them increased their velocities from where they started out from the control group up to the group of the ones that were using the rope, 75%. The other thing, which is even more fascinating, is 50% of those guys that increased 75% reached their top number and above it. So in baseball, we have where you sit and what you've touched. Where you sit is what you're throwing in the game on an average. What you've touched is your highest pitch. So these 50% increase their velocities over the highest pitch they've ever thrown in about a 10 to 15 minute exercise. So what it did, what we saw on the film, is we saw that on a lot of kids, it extended the stride. And then secondly, and even more importantly, which that shows that more power was added in the stride, is they transferred that power because their trunks of their chest on the release of the ball were further to the plate than what the control group showed. As they reached out further and further and further to hit this bucket lid, they put their body in a position to feel power and the release of that power. Now, were the mechanics perfect in all that? No, they weren't but it allowed the kid to feel what power feels like down the mound. The most important thing that we can teach in coaching is a power, is to feel something, not power, to feel the curveball, to feel the hands inside, to feel the knob go to the pitcher. This helped them feel how to get to mound, and then we had the data to beat the opinion of what this has. So guys, I'm curious on what your take on this, if you guys used it in the past, that was my fun little experiment, but let me know. Nuke out.